We have no time to waste today. There's a lot to go over. I have the brand new Cleona Jeweled Light and Dimensional Multichrome Bundles in front of me, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about them. Need to preface by saying I was sent both of these bundles in PR from Cleona. Thank you so much to Cleona for sending these to me. Also, I did do some commissioned work for their website, some macro swatches and arm swatches. So this video is inherently biased. As always, I'm going to try to remain as objective and fair as possible, but there's no way for me to be completely unbiased. Finally, I do have an affiliate code with Cleona Cosmetics. It is Seeking Shifts and it will save you an additional 6% on your purchase. Thank you so much. If you use it, I do earn a small commission. Okay. That's everything. Let's get into the main part of this video. Let's start with the jeweled lights. Don't worry, I'm gonna go in depth about each and every shade. These are described as versatile shimmering shadows with gray bases and intense color shifts. Compared to the original jewels, our lights have a brighter and more shimmering finish and can be blended out without muddying their color shifts. So the OG jeweled multichromes from Cleona, if you're not familiar, they are traditional black base multichromes and they have a very like slick, shiny finish in a black base. So because of that, they're pretty hard to blend out around the edges. I'm going to do a dedicated portion where I compare different textures so I'll get more in depth about how the textures and finish compare but for now we're just going to go over each individual shade and how they swatch and apply on the eye. Let's start with Forge Light. This is described as having a gray base that shifts bright coral orange yellow lime. In person to me this reads as a cool tone almost like maroon red to orange to yellow to green and from a really harsh angle in the right light you catch a tiny hint of teal but I'd say like in most settings the most primary shifts you'll see are that red to yellow to green and because red and green are opposite on the color wheel it does look really really shifty in person like it's not one that you're going to have to do gymnastics to see the shifts. So in terms of application, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing for all of these. I'm going to tap it on my finger in the center of my lid so you can see what it looks like at the most opaque application. And then along the edges, I'm using a brush so you can see what it looks like when you diffuse it out. And I'm using a tapered but not super dense brush. It's a refer to, I believe. And here's what it looks like with flash from my phone. So you can see there is a bit of PC sparkle, but it doesn't feel textured to me. It feels very smooth. Not quite as silky as a traditional jewel though. Kiln Light is described as a gray base that shifts bright red, orange, yellow, chartreuse. So in terms of difference in tone between this and Forge Light, from straight on this reads to me as more of a vibrant primary red. And the shifts primarily go from orange to yellow to that hint of chartreuse that you don't really see. You can slightly see it on my eyes, but overall I'd say mostly you see the red and yellow for the most part. Another thing I noticed about this, it feels a bit more PC and dispersed than the others like you can see that base peeking through a bit more hopefully this will translate as I'm applying it on my eye so keep in mind as I use my finger that's the most opaque way to apply it but then when I go in with the brush that's what it looks like diffused along the edges and you can really see that base peeking through a little bit but I wouldn't say it's muddy by any means it's just a little bit of that gray base showing through when I have the direct source of flash on my phone on it, you do see that green shift, but I would say in most realistic everyday settings, you don't. Sandblast Light has a gray base that shifts bright copper, peach, gold. This to me felt a little bit more dense than the other jeweled lights. It reads almost more opaque when I swatched it, when I applied it on my eyes. And I also feel like the base might be deeper. You can kind of see in this hand swatch here, it looks like a deeper gray. I might just be imagining that, but <laughs> that is just how I perceive it in person. This is probably one of the least shifty out of all the jeweled lights because it really only goes from orange to yellow. And from a harsh angle, you see maybe a tiny bit of green, but keep in mind, I have multiple direct light sources coming at me so I can show you all of the shifts of these multichrome. So in an everyday setting, I don't know that you would really see the green. I think you would only see the orange and the gold slash yellow. Burnished Light has a gray base that shifts bright copper, yellow, chartreuse, mint. Y'all, this one, this is an absolute standout. If you're going to pick up just one, pick up Burnished Light. I cannot describe to you how insanely captivating, vibrant, beautiful, yet somehow neutral, spicy, yet approachable. It's just all the things. It is, oh my gosh, 
I thought this would be really similar. I actually did a post recently on like gold, green, teal shifting multichromes, and I thought this would just be another one of those, but it is insane. I had to stop when I was doing this eye swatch and post, <laughs> see how surprised I am? I had to post something on my Instagram stories to show everyone what it looked like because I was, for lack of a better word, shook. I feel like if I had to categorize this as one color, I would call it a bronze, but I, I do think that's doing it a disservice. It's just like all of the colors. It, even in regular lighting, like I was walking around my house and just looking at myself in different reflective surfaces, catching all the shifts, so good. Patina Light has a gray base that shifts bright gold, lime, turquoise, blue. Patina has always been a shade I was intrigued by from Cleona. Even though I'm not a green eyeshadow girly and I don't really like their traditional jeweled multichrome formula, I was interested to see what it looks like in person. This one is so, so, so vibrant and bright and reflective. It's, I feel like it almost has extra shine to it compared to the others. And all of these are shiny, I would say, but something about it is just like a reflective beam of light. From straight on, you mostly get that like chartreuse gold green. And then from an angle, you see like the more cool tone green and then teal and then in the right lighting i think you do catch a little bit of a blue shift but for the most part you're going to stay in that green teal family i'm actually really excited to use this in a look i want to pair it with my natasha denona yucca palette i think that would be a perfect match so i will definitely share a look when i do trefoil light has a gray base that shifts bright lime turquoise cobalt this is one that is very intriguing to me. I feel like it's not quite a green, but not quite a teal either. It exists in that like seafoam adjacent realm. It's not the most shifty. It really only goes from like cool tone aqua green to teal to blue, but the precise like undertone of it, it's so intriguing to me. I really want to do just a simple look with a neutral in my crease and then this all over the lid. I think that would be such a fun summer look. So I'll share that when I do that as well on my Instagram stories or on my main feed. Just want to note when I'm using that slightly fluffy tapered brush, I am getting a tiny bit of fallout. Um, it does wipe away easily, but I'd say you're better off using a dense brush if you want to apply these with a brush. Oculus Light has a gray base that shifts bright emerald, aqua, indigo, violet. So to me, this primarily reads as a teal to blue to purple, and those are the main shifts that I catch. Like in most lightings, this is a fairly ubiquitous type of multichrome shift. If you have a number of black base multichromes, you probably have the black base equivalent to this. Most brands have their own version. So this is one of the least exciting to me, but it is very shifty and very beautiful. So the jewel lights read as more shiny than anything on the eyes, but if you do apply them as more of a dispersed wash, you'll catch that pieciness to them. And I like that they allow for that versatility in application. You can really just create whichever effect you want to go for. Spire Light has a gray base that shifts bright blue, purple, peach. This reads as an insanely saturated, vibrant primary blue, and it primarily shifts to purple. And you do see that slight, I guess, peach is what they call it, shift from a very harsh angle. But in a realistic setting, I'd say you can mostly count on just seeing that blue and purple shift. Now, I've talked about this before, but I think something about this specific blue pigment is inherently less shiny and reflective than other pigments. I don't know what exactly causes that, but it's something I encountered when we were working on my collab with Shine by SD. It's just like that particular pigment doesn't reflect light as much or in a different way. So it's not going to be as shiny as the other jeweled lights. It's kind of a similar level of shine as sandblast light. So I think what you're mostly paying for if you were to get this is that insanely beautiful, vibrant blue to purple. Rosette Light has a gray base that shifts bright teal, indigo, magenta, peach. I did have the original jeweled rosette, but I did declutter it when I was doing my project, going through my collection one by one, using it in looks because I realized I'm just not going to realistically use a black base jeweled multichrome on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I used rosette light. I just put a taupe in my crease and I put rosette all over my lid and I went to pick up takeout and I was absolutely in love with how it looked. It was so easy to just slap on my eyelids and I can see myself using this all the time. 
I know it looks like a really colorful shade, but there's something so approachable about it and the fact that now it's in a formula where you can sheer it out and kind of blend it into a more toned down look. I feel like I can make this almost everyday friendly, quote unquote, you know what I mean? It's one of those ones that's really shifty no matter what light you're in. And the original rosette is like this too. Like it's this cool tone, like soft blue to purple to pink to gold. Just absolutely stunning. Definitely recommend this one. Flame Blown Light has a gray base that shifts bright purple, pink, peach, yellow, chartreuse. This one is really unique. And I know I've said before, like a jeweled multichrome is a jeweled multichrome is a jeweled multichrome. Like if one brand has a black base multichrome, chances are every other brand has that too, because it's just like that base multichrome pigment mixed with the brand's own formula. But this one is so unique. I've never come across an exact dupe. Let me know if you know of one. But anyway, I had the original Flame Blown, love the colors, never used it because I didn't like the formula. So this one I'm so excited to have in this jeweled like formula. It's this beautiful cool toned purple to pink to peach to gold, I would say, are the main shifts you see in a realistic everyday setting. And I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I just freaking love that you can kind of customize these to your own makeup style. You can layer it to be a really opaque, slick layer of multi-chrome, or you can sheer it out for a more PC dimensional finish and you don't lose those beautiful, intense shifts. Last jeweled light we have here is called Smolder Light. This has a gray base that ships bright magenta, coral, peach, yellow, lime. Now, if you have any palette that has a multi-chrome in it, if you have black base multi-chromes, if you have a collection, honestly, if you're watching this video, you might already have a dupe to this, to be honest with you, because this is the most common type of multi-chrome shifting pigment. And don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. Like, I love this, but I just, if you're trying to avoid buying dupes, I would say probably just go ahead and don't buy this one. Unless you absolutely love this type of shift, then hey, you do you. But anyway, it's quite vibrant and shiny, and I'd say in most realistic settings, you're going to see primarily that magenta and then that gold to green shift. Don't worry, I'll do plenty of comparisons later on in this video so you can see how it compares to other similar shades, but that's gonna wrap up the jeweled light, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the dimensionals now. The dimensional multichromes are described as a bright, sparkling version of the beloved jeweled multichromes. They feature a gray base and multicolored glitter particles that give extra dimension to the eye for a nearly holographic effect. Now these, I feel like, are Cleona's answer to the popular like Terra Moons flaky shades, and they have a variety of different finishes, textures, and particle size, so I'll have to describe each one individually. By the way, when they say glitter, they don't mean like plastic glitter, they mean flakes of mica. Solder shifts pink, peach, yellow, green with multicolored micro glitter. Now, in terms of texture and finish, I'd say this is one of the less textured dimensional multichromes. Has a medium particle size and it smooths out with relative ease. But as you can see in this close up footage, it does have texture to it. And in terms of applying, I'd say with all the dimensionals, there is going to be some level of fallout. So either I would recommend doing your eyes before your base or use something to mitigate the amount of fallout, whether that's a tacky base or maybe spraying your brush before you apply it. I'm going to um, play with these, do some wear tests and stuff, and then I'm going to come back in a video and talk about how they wear throughout the day and give some tips and tricks for application. So in a few weeks or so, I'll come back with a video about that. But anyway, this is most similar to Smolder, which we just went over. I don't know if that's why they called it Solder, but that's kind of smart if they did. I'll definitely do some comparisons later on in this video. Redox shifts lilac, pink, green, aqua with multicolored micro glitter and a silvery sheen. This I would say is more of like a smoky purple that shifts to a desaturated gold and green. I actually purchased this first on my own a while back when they first released it because I was curious about the formula and then they included this when they gifted it to me. So the one I'm swatching here is my original one. I don't know if they changed it at all. I'm assuming no, but I plan to give away the one they gifted me untouched so that's why i just left it as is anyway this is again one of the less textured ones it has a medium particle size smooths out with relative ease and there is a tiny bit of fallout but it's easy to mitigate from my experience working with this shade i've worn it in a few looks and as a one shadow look Ion is described as shifting ultraviolet beige gold with multicolored micro glitter and a pink sheen. This to me is like a 
royal blue slash indigo from straight on but with that pink sheen it almost does read as a purple from certain angles and then it shifts to gold and green really unique combination in my opinion i haven't really seen anything quite like this and it does have those multicolored flecks in it now let me talk to you about the experience of touching this and applying it so like i said it's very flaky and i can just tell from feeling it that it's not going to be the easiest to adhere to your eyelid I did not have any trouble getting it to adhere to my bare eyelid, but I can just tell that if I were to put this over a mat or a set base, it would almost like fly away. Like I don't think it would stick down easily. Definitely would benefit from using a tacky base, but overall the effect it creates is absolutely stunning. And I think it's one that might be worth the extra hassle it would require. Catalyst shifts turquoise indigo violet red gold with multicolored micro glitter and an aqua sheen. To me, this reads as a smoky teal that shifts to blue, purple, gold, and it has, like I mentioned before, all of those multicolored sparkles in it. In terms of texture and finish, it falls somewhere in between the first two shades and the last one I showed you, so it's got a larger particle size, flaky to an extent, but not as much as Ion. That one I think is the most flaky of all. I didn't have any trouble getting this to adhere to my eyelid, but I will probably use Fearnay Pixie Epoxy or some other type of tacky base if I were to use this in a full-on look with mattes underneath. On the eyes, you do mostly see that smoky teal, but then in other lightings, I see the purple and gold from a harsh angle, but again, from straight on, it's mostly that smoky teal. Oxidized is described as shifting emerald blue violet with multicolored micro glitter and a silvery red sheen. I don't really see the emerald that they're referring to. This to me reads as a very desaturated, warm, smoky blue that shifts to purple and gold. Very, very, I don't know another word right now, dimensional. <laughs> Has so many different colored flecks of sparkle and it almost gives a holographic effect. This is one of my favorites based on first impressions. Really love how it looks. I think the fact that it's so desaturated makes it very easy to use despite being a more textured and sparkly eyeshadow. I think a lot of people would get along with this one. In terms of the texture and finish, I think again, it is, falls somewhere in the middle. It's got a larger particle size, but it's not quite as intensely flaky as Ion. Definitely will give you some fallout. So again, I would recommend using a tacky base for all of these. Tarnish shifts lime green aqua with multicolored micro glitter and a golden sheen. This one, again, I'm not a green eyeshadow girly, but oh my gosh, this is definitely a standout in my opinion. I cannot wait to use this in a bunch of looks. I feel like there's so much I can do with it. It has so many different colored flecks of sparkle. I see like an icy blue, I see orange, gold, and they really pop out against that green base. In terms of shifts, it's a desaturated, almost like olive green to an emerald green to teal. Again, it's not as saturated as something like patina that I showed you earlier. So I feel like that makes it almost neutral adjacent and pretty approachable. I'm, like I said, so excited to experiment with this and I will definitely share any looks I do. Don't sleep on this one. It is so much more beautiful in person than any photo or video can accurately portray. And it falls somewhere in the middle in terms of the particle size and texture. It's got that large particle size, a bit flaky, but not as intense like press flake type as Ion. Okay, we saved the best for last. We have Ferric, which is described as shifting rose gold lime aqua with multicolored micro glitter and a silvery sheen. This one is extraordinary. It is absolutely insane. Instantly fell in love with this. I think it's sold out, but don't panic if you see this and fall in love with it because they do what are called rolling restocks where they restock on a pretty regular basis and they seem to prioritize the most popular shades so i would be surprised if they don't restock this in their next rolling restock i really think this might be the spicy neutral to end all spicy neutrals it is so insanely beautiful from straight on it's this like mauvey rosy brown and then it shifts to this desaturated pale gold to olive green it is just oh absolutely divine the sparkles seem to be mainly like silver, pale green, maybe pale teal too. Kind of hard to tell because there's so much going on. And it has a large particle size and it's pretty flaky to give me some fallout. But 
honestly, I'm willing to go through that extra, extra hassle because it's so beautiful. Here's some time. So from left to right, we have Shine by SD Burning Flames, which I believe is their version of Kiln, Terra Moons Aurora Australis, Kiln Light, Saffron from Cleona, Cleona Mosaic, Terra Moons Mirage, which is their version of Forge, and then Forge Light. So Aurora Australis is like pretty spot on in terms of tone for Kiln, but it's more flaky in texture and you see that base peeking through more. I thought Mosaic would be pretty spot on for Forge Light, but it's not quite as shifty and the formula is a bit more like thick, I guess would be the best way to describe it. From left to right, we have Davina Chromosphere, Terra Moons Titan, which is a dupe to Ochre from Cleona, Burnished Light, Shine by SD Inferno, Cleona Eris, Terra Moons Mercury, which is a dupe to Burnt Sienna from Cleona, Terra Moons Jovian Storm, and then Sandblast Light. So Sandblast Light is deeper and more opaque than Mercury from Terra Moons, aka the dupe to Burnt Sienna. I thought they would be a lot more similar, but I definitely see a difference. As for Burnished Light, I didn't have anything that is really super close to it. So from left to right, we have Divina Hemisphere, Terra Moons Ophiuchus, Tarnish, Cleona Weld, Terra Moon Solar Expansion, Terra Moon's Protostar, and then Ferric. So Tarnish kind of reminds me in tone of Hemisphere, but obviously the texture is very different. Hemisphere is very smooth. Ophiuchus is a little bit more vibrant, but very similar texture and finish. Ferric, I didn't have anything super similar. It reminded me of a lot lighter and less saturated version of the shades to the left, especially Weld. I don't know if you can see the similarity there. From left to right, we have Terra Moon's Big Bang, which is a dupe to Cleona Verde. Also, it's a very weak swatch because mine is almost fully pan, so it's mostly to show you the colors. Anyway, Shine by SD Furious, Trefoil Light, Cleona Hedge Maze, Cleona Embroidery, Shall We Serendipity, and Patina Light. Furious from Shine by SD and Serendipity from Shall We Makeup are this newer type of jeweled multichrome that doesn't have a black base but still creates that same effect so as you can see they're a little bit more opaque and shiny but conversely i don't find them to be that much more user friendly than a traditional black base multi-chrome from left to right we have nc rain at nightfall spire light terra moon's cosmic dancer shall we double take and oculus light cosmic dancer is pretty similar in tone but it has that like brownish light base so it looks a lot softer also, the particle size is overall pretty small, so it has a smooth, shiny finish, whereas with Oculus Light, you can see there's a bit of dimension there. By the way, I don't have any of the Cleona Jeweled Multichrome equivalents to these jeweled lights. Check out Millie's video if you want to see that. She has all of them. She compared them because she's the Multichrome Queen. Left to right, Ensley Rain, Moon Shadow, Rosette Light, Catalyst, Terra Moons Interdimensional, Terra Moons Milky Way, Terra Moons, Witch's Broom, Nebula, and Oxidize. I struggled to find shades to compare with Oxidize. I really thought Milky Way would be similar to it, but as you can see, they're quite different. Also, I was surprised to see how similar Rosette Light and Catalyst are when swatched next to each other. It did not occur to me when I first swatched them separately. Left to right, Shall We, La Luna, Shine by SD Top Notch, Flame Blown Light, Cleona Royal Plum, Terra Moons Mystic Mountain, Redox, Terra Moons Phantom Galaxy, Terra Moons Chasing Comets, and then Ion. So Mystic Mountain and Redox are very similar in terms of tone. Mystic Mountain is more flaky and Redox is a little bit of a smaller particle size. I didn't have anything super similar to Ion. I'd say Phantom Galaxy is kind of similar in terms of tone but the texture is vastly different. Phantom Galaxy is more of a smooth finish. Last group for color comparisons from left to right, Cleona Cobblestone, Solder, Terra Moons Vela Supernova, Cleona Queen's Banquet, and then Smolder Light. So I didn't realize at first how similar Cobblestone is to Solder. It's softer and a little bit lighter, not quite as textured. And then Queen's Banquet I thought would be really similar to Smolder Light, and I do think they are. I don't think you need both. Smolder Light is a little bit more vibrant and more reflective. So I was very perplexed by the jeweled lights when they first announced them because I was like, we already have the deep iridescence and the hybrids. 
what is this going to offer? So I'm going to try to really get in the nitty gritty and explain the differences to you for anyone else who might be curious. So the deep iridescents are very smooth. They have a consistent particle size. The hybrids feel a little bit thicker and more creamy compared to the jeweled lights. They do have some texture and sparkle to them, but overall I definitely see a difference in formula and you can see the base kind of peeking through more in the jeweled light from that harsh angle I'm showing you right now. Here to the jeweled multi-chromes, the jeweled lights are not quite as slick or emollient, but they pick up a lot more readily with a finger or brush. They don't feel like they're quite as densely packed into the pan. So it seems to be a common issue that the jeweled multi-chromes crease on a lot of people, myself as well. So I won't be able to speak to that in this video, but I'll do some wear tests and come back and let you know if the jeweled lights crease on me. So I feel like there are three different textures and finishes among the dimensionals. I wanted to try to contextualize them. So I have Ion at the left, which is the most extra chunky, flaky boy. Then Tarnish, which most of them are. It's like in the middle, large particle size and flaky. We have Ophiuchus from Terra Moons, which I feel like a lot of people would be familiar with the Terra Moons flaky formula. We have Gilding, the glitter iridescent. That's the most flaky slash chunky shade from Cleona previously. We have Redox, which is the smaller particle size, flaky dimensional, and then Carving, which is a glitter multi-chrome. So I don't know if this is helpful at all. I'm going to do some close-up footage here. So here's some extra close-up footage with the macro lens of my camera. Hopefully this can help display the different particle sizes. As you can see, some are more flaky than others. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. It helps me out a lot. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I'm going to link Millie's videos below because, like I said, she has all the jeweled to compare the jeweled lights to, and she has other shades in her collection that I don't have, so I think you would benefit from watching her video as well. I'm sure if you're here, you already have. But other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.